Hi, I'm Colin Klupik, and welcome to this video series where we talk to Dr. Martha Burns about the latest from the field of neuroscience and what it has to say about learning. In this discussion, we talk about ADD and ADHD, or Attention Deficit Disorder and Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Well, I think there are lots of things parents do naturally, actually. Um, a few things that are easy and that that any parent can do without any trouble at all is things like reading to a child at night. If you read to a child um, or if a child's young, you just talk to the child at night in a quiet room you can get them ready to, to get ready for bed and try to extend the period of time where they can listen to you before they interrupt you or before they do something else so that at first you might have a simple picture book that has five or six pictures in it for a young child and you just ask them to point to the pictures but gradually they're listening to stories um, like Good Night Moon was one of my favorite as a little girl and they love to listen to the story they start to be able to anticipate what's coming next and you're, you're gradually expanding their attention span by lengthening the stories that they read at night so from maybe a two to three minute story to maybe a five minute story or a ten minute story and that's one way there's another way that we've been using for centuries um, that neuroscientists have just discovered is gr a great test of attention and that is your ability to um, it's called inhibition your ability to inhibit a response that you might normally use and that ability to inhibit yourself and to constrain yourself because ADHD is a disorder not just of attention but also a disorder of disinhibition children are impulsive um, so Simon Says is a game that almost every parent plays with their children um, teachers can play with young children in school and of course you know the rules are you say stand up sit down but the only time the child follows the rule is if you say Simon says so they can't just have a knee-jerk response and do it they have to listen for that Simon says and that's building up this ability to inhibit or to decrease their impulsivity so by increasing attention span through reading or doing any activities even playing board games where the child is being asked to, to sit a little bit longer and just keep doing the same thing a little bit longer but at the same time having games or activities where the child has to um, inhibit their impulsiveness you're driving the frontal lobe of the brain to develop this remarkable capacity to, to attend and that will do well in school conventional wisdom said and the conventional way ADHD was treated was with medication and the medication that's been around the longest is methylphenidate which is the medication that's in drugs like Ritalin and Concerta um, and we do know that methylphenidate is successful in increasing attentional skills and, and decreasing impulsivity in children diagnosed with ADHD for about 14 months um, the original study that was done showed that if you combine methylphenidate with behavioral therapy you have the best outcome but that was a 14 month study um, and a newer study was just published by the Academy of um, Child and Adolescent Psychiatry just published about a year ago showing that the medication the effects of the medication start to wear off after 14 months so that methylphenidate is effective for 14 months and then we start to see that a regression toward the mean meaning that those children start to go back to where the children with ADHD are who are not medicated now there are designer drugs out there and different drugs that might be effective but the way neuroscience is leaning now is to train children out of having attentional problems through very um, targeted specific exercises that demand attention on the one end but also drive neurotransmitters, neuromodulators, the chemicals in the brain that are upregulated with medication. So for example, methylphenidate is a norepinephrine enhancer. And norepinephrine is, is the neuromodulator that gets your brain excited about something new. So it, it's triggered when you have novel information and we often call AD, children with ADHD novelty seekers because they're often looking for that kind of buzz if you will well you can upregulate norepinephrine naturally through behavioral interventions that are game-like and have novelty built into them so neuroscientists are looking for those kinds of interventions to drive 
attentional skills. And right now the research is, is showing some very good success with a couple of different kinds of approaches to that kind of intervention for attentional disorders. Well, there's quite a bit of research. There's a woman whose name is Adele Diamond who's been studying ADD versus ADHD, for example. And she feels that ADD is really a working memory and a auditory processing disorder primarily, and is a very different, is not really an attentional problem per se, and that interventions that improve working memory and auditory processing will be more effective with that. And then the ADD, the ADHD research, and the reason it's controversial, goes back to a discussion you and I had earlier about diseases. Um, the question is, is ADHD a disease, and it, should it be treated as a disease with a medication? Or is ADHD a different way that the brain is processing information, and can it be trained out of that? And I would say that the neuroscience approach is leading much more to the training, that ADHD is amenable to training, and that the brain can learn to attend and can learn to ignore distractions, and that those kinds of interventions might have much more long-lasting effects and more positive effects than medication, which tends, the brain tends to adapt because it's plastic, it tends to adapt to medications so that they only last for, for a period of time and then they're no longer effective. Well, first I would say that having a child with ADHD is hard work anyway, whether you have medication or not. You're worried about the child a lot. You're worried about them getting in trouble. They're often um, having, getting into trouble at school. They are impulsive, so they're likely to do things that lead to difficulties later on. Now, there are people who, on the, on the side who really believe strongly that medications are the way to go who would argue that medications solve a lot of those problems. They reduce some of that risk-taking that these children are prone to. They reduce their their likelihood of taking drugs to self-medicate themselves. Um, but what I would, what, what's exciting to me is that the interventions that we're talking about are not long-term. We're not talking about putting a child into a two-year rehabilitation plan for ADHD. Two of the major products that are out there that uh, have good research for attentional problems, one is CogMed on one side and another is Fast For, for Word on the other. Um, show that in six weeks you can get some very dramatic changes in attentional skills. And the parents don't really have to do anything except monitor the children on the computer for 50 minutes a day or half an hour a day. So if a parent is willing to just purchase a, a program or if a school is willing to put it into the school day, which is even better, there was a great study done by Courtney Stevens where they actually just used the fast-forward programs during the day with school children um, for about six weeks. You can get, show dramatic increases in attentional skills and you don't have to worry about drug regimens. Drugs have side effects, the children have trouble sleeping at night, so that's problematic for parents. So in the end, I think the, as we get better interventions, they're gonna be easier to use and less problematic overall than worrying about drug regimens, worrying about changing the drugs after a few months, worrying about did my child really take it, did they not, do they have sleeping disorders, are there other side effects.